direction of this going. Uh, Russia has oil to offer, but there is uh, US pressure not to buy, uh, buy oil from Russia. Where is India going to stand on this? And how does this impact overall global availability situation on oil, natural gas, and other fuel products? So I think it's a, it's a fundamentally important and I would say a brilliant question because on that hinges the whole scene. First and foremost, let me clear the cobwebs on all this contrived narrative, all this business about, you know, they don't want you to buy this, they don't want to, you to do that. First of all, what are the hard facts? My colleague and friend, the external affairs minister, was going to the United States recently for the two plus two talks on with Rajnath Singh Ji and uh, their counterparts. And through a WhatsApp exchange, and he asked me, what is our overall scenario? And I told him, the Europeans buy more oil in one afternoon than India buys in a quarter. It may have been a signal problem, I don't know. But when he came out in the press conference, he said, the Europeans buy more oil in one afternoon than India buys in a month. No, actually, I said in a quarter. After it used the figures, I have a young researcher sitting, I said, make sure the number, I'm 100% sure. Navika ji, we ended the previous financial year, which is on 31st March 2022. Our total purchase of oil from Russia was 0.2%, number one. So what is it, this narrative is going on and on. First of all, I, I ask you a simple question, is oil, are the oil entities in Russia under sanction? I'm asking you the question, number one. Number two, all right, no, no, it was that 0.2%, but you bought, I checked with my uh, people. First of all, you know, we have private sector players. Even our OMCs don't come to me for direction. Oil marketing companies, some of them are Fortune 500 companies. They take their independent decision, but I checked. At that particular point of time, somebody told me that they, somebody had bought, I think, 15 million barrels for delivery over the next three or four months. Madam, I have submitted you, submit kiya. our daily consumption is 5 million barrels. If you buy the supply of 3 days, does that show up in the statistics? Number one. Russia has the oil, it exports most of it, most of it, to the People's Republic of China and Europe. More, most of the gas which comes to Europe comes through pipelines from Russia. We have what is called the geographical factor. You know, it's much more economical for you to be buying oil, hypothetically from the Gulf states or Iran. Iran has 35 million barrels available on a platform. Once those, Iran is no longer under, uh, you know, sanctions by the, uh, 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 you know, by one particular country, Iranian oil becomes available. It is not a question of shortage of oil. I keep coming back to that. In fact, if the OPEC plus countries honor their quotas, what they are supposed to do. Many countries in Africa belonging to OPEC plus are not producing the desired quantity. So I'll say it's not a question of shortage of oil, but whatever it is, we will diversify, we will get, we will not allow, and by the way, we are one of the few countries which is extremely fortunate. We have a refining capacity of about 250 million metric tons per annum today. It's a lot of refining capacity. We sell to other people. We are going to take that up from 250 to 400 uh, million metric tons per annum. Our biofuel uh, blending, Navika ji, last year, first of all, let me give you the history. When I was ambassador to Brazil, we were fondly hoping that we could get 5% ethanol blending in 10 or 15 of our states and union territories. We ended, when the previous government uh, is, um, handed over power, our total blending was what, 1.3%? Maximum 1.4, less. Today, last month, we reached 10% blending. You know, 10% blending means a foreign exchange saving of 30,000 crores. So we are pushing ahead. A exploration and production. Well, you know, somebody, uh, when I became a minister a few months ago, somebody asked me, why did ENP chada? Maine ka neglect? Hua. Then I said, hey, wait a minute. Neglect is a criminal neglect. Tha. I had the feeling the system was game just to allow imports to take place. And you're right. Our crude oil imports are not 80%, they're 85% plus. That is because the economy is growing. And 
our ENP has been slow, but if I have this conversation with you in a few months' time, if you do enough, it would have shot up from 7 8% to 10% and 15%, because we are really going at it with revolutionary zeal. We are, we are changing the policy, bringing in revenue sharing, making sure there are no impediments left. And if I can help it, I would like to have a, a well in every backyard, because oil is there. The natural resources are there. We just got caught in our own procedures uh, because of, as I said, uh, several years of neglect. At 2000, by the time we, uh, the Modi government came in 2014, May, nothing had been done in 2007. That's when we started stepping up. And oil and gas typically have a gestation period, Navika ji, which can be five to 10 years. Now we are rectifying it. By the way, our gas uh, uh, production, I think, is going up 18% now. So. Things are, things are happening. We just have to weather the, navigate through the current international crisis. So you're saying that uh, 10 years from 2014,